Hey guys, this is Jack and welcome to this video in my how to fly FPV quad series. Now in this video, I'll be going over the basics of hovering, the science behind it, how you can improve your hovering and how you can practice it in the liftoff simulator. Now hovering may seem fairly simple to you, but in fact, I found it one of the most difficult things to do when flying an FPV quad. When you fly forward, it feels like you are in total control and you can send the quad in any direction you like. But when hovering, this all changes. All of a sudden you have a slight breeze that pushes you to the side, which requires you to use all four sticks to get it back into position. So let's dig into some of the science behind hovering. When you power up your quad on the ground and apply some throttle, your props create an increased pressure bubble under your quad, which lifts it off the ground quite easily. This pressure bubble is called ground effect, and it allows your quad to actually bounce around on the ground with the pressure bubble under it. This bubble is only there for about the first three inches of lift off the ground, and then it starts going away. We'll be using this pressure bubble under your quad in your first steps of hovering, but more on that in a second. Ground effect is also helpful for landings, since if you bring your quad in quite fast and drop it down, the ground effect will make the harsh landing a little bit softer. The science is pretty awesome. Next, let's talk about your radio inputs. Firstly, for the rest of these videos, we will only be flying in acro or manual mode, so make sure your quad is set up in this way. Also, I fly in mode 2, which is what I found the easiest to learn on, and it's definitely the mode that I would recommend you flying in. All these lessons will be focused on flying in mode 2, so if you are flying mode 1 already, you might need to take your own initiative and figure out some of the radio inputs yourself. Now one thing to understand when you fly in acro mode is that your quad will keep the same attitude when you take your hands off the sticks, exactly the same as in this video demonstration. You'll notice that I roll my quad to the left or the right and then don't give any input. This will keep the quad going in that direction. So if I want to stop it from going to the left, I need to correct the attitude by applying roll in the opposite direction, beyond the center point. Like I just said, if you were to just bring it to the center point, the quad will keep heading in the same direction. You need to bring it back by applying input in the opposite direction. This is really important to understand, especially if you are used to flying in stabilized mode with the quad auto levels if you take your hand off the sticks. Now this is exactly the same for hovering. When you start drifting into one direction, you need to apply input in the opposite direction, but not too much, since if you overcorrect the error, you will end up making a bigger mess. So that brings me to the final point. When you hover, your stick inputs need to be extremely small and very precise. Any quick input or sudden movement will make the drifting off to the side even worse. Now that you know the science behind hovering, let's get you up and flying. First, you want to make a quick change to your quad. Make sure that your camera angle is set at about 5 degrees. The closer it is to zero, the easier it will be to hover. Next, you want to make sure that your location is big and open. Finally, you want to check if there's any wind. If the wind is blowing, you want to sit with your wind blowing into your back and your quad facing straight into it. This will make hovering a little bit easier. Then what you would want to do is place a reference point about 10 feet in front of you. I would suggest using a pool noodle or basically any stick that will be visible on your FPV camera. Finally, place your quad at least 15 feet in front of the noodle facing yourself so that when you fly, you want to be looking at yourself. Then for this exercise, your goal is to keep the pool noodle or your reference point lined up with yourself. This way, you'll quickly notice if you start drifting off to the side. Now for the first exercise, you want to apply enough throttle to activate the ground effect and your quad starts bouncing around on the air bubble. This will be very close to the ground, about 3 inches maximum. Once you've found your throttle sweet spot, you can basically take your throttle hand off the radio for the first exercise. Now if you are flying mode 2 as I mentioned earlier, you will only be using your right hand to control the roll and pitch. As I said, once you're off the ground, try and keep the reference point lined up with yourself. If you move too far to the left, apply some roll to the right. If you notice you're moving too far back, then apply some pitch forward. Don't even touch the throttle or yaw yet, only focus on your right hand. You will touch the ground and it may move your quad a little bit skew, but that is fine. As long as you can see the reference point, just keep going. Feel free to reposition your quad if it yours too much and then start the process all over again. And that's it for the first step in learning to hover. Now once you can keep your quad fairly stable in one position, you want to move on to the next exercise. So next, you want to apply enough throttle to be at least 1 meter above the ground. This time you will need to have both hands on the radio. Now when hovering 1 meter above the ground, It'll feel like the quad is very, very loose, almost like a marble in a frying pan. It is extremely important to stay focused and sense the smallest error in movement. If you notice you are slightly starting to move to the left, you need to slowly apply roll in the opposite direction. 
Since the longer you wait to correct it, the more likely it's going to get exponentially worse. Stay focused, make very, very minor and small adjustments and try and keep the quad as still as you possibly can. Once you're able to fly one battery for about three minutes non-stop without accidentally chopping your head off, you're ready to move on to the next lesson. Hovering in one spot will teach you a lot more than what you actually realize, so don't get upset if you still can't get it after the 10th battery. As I said, I still find hovering much more difficult than a lot of advanced things that I do, so you can never practice your hovering technique too much. Finally, before you go out and learn how to hover for real, you want to make sure that you at least have some idea of how you should do it. So for this, we'll be practicing to hover on the liftoff FPV simulator. Now liftoff is amazing since you also experience the ground effect which makes it so much easier to practice your pitch and roll. So for this, we'll be doing exactly the same as what we're doing in real life. Now before you start flying, you want to make sure that your camera angle is set on 5 degrees. This will make hovering a lot easier. This specific track or one very similar will be in the liftoff game in the tutorial section. So you can access it and practice your hovering very easily. Now exactly as I explained before, you want to find that sweet spot on the throttle where you start bouncing on the pressure bubble and then you only use your right stick to keep you into position. Do not give any inputs on the left stick. You can take your hand off if you like. Now because we don't have any external forces acting on the quad, it's a lot easier to keep it in position. So you would want to apply a little bit of pitch forward and roll to the left so that you can start the errors which you will be correcting. What you could even do is throw the quad in one direction and see how quickly you can correct that error and get it into a hover. This will be very helpful for real life when a gust of wind comes along and throws your quad around. Once you're able to keep the quad hovering in one very tight spot, you can move on to the next exercise. Next, bring your quad up and level to the highest reference point. You'll notice that there are two circles at the top. You want to keep these as much aligned as possible. This is where you would need to start getting your throttle control sorted as well. Keep practicing this until you're able to quickly get both points aligned, move off course and align them again. Once you're finally able to do this, you are good to go. I can with confidence say that if you are able to hover like this in liftoff, you shouldn't have a lot of problem getting off the ground in real life. Thanks a lot for sticking around through this entire video and if you enjoyed it and learned a lot, then don't forget to subscribe and like. I'll be bringing out tons of videos that will help you become a better FPV pilot. This video has also taken an immense amount of time to make. So you guys' support is what keeps me driving to make these. Thanks a ton for all of it. Now in the next video, we'll start flying around and learn how to bring your quad to a standstill and hover. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in my next video. This is Jack, signing off.